Hey family, and thank you for coming back to the channel, Dale Chanel's 40s World, featuring the family affair. Woo, we finally, what to my light? What my bug down below? Okay, there we go. Got lights now, camera action. Well, we finally got down to the last episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 12, episode 22. Lord knows they don't walk us down through Proposal Gate when Mike had proposed that Cynthia Bailey's wine opening cellar thing she was going through. We got through Snake Gate, didn't find out who the snake was, but it was it was too hilarious when Eva not Eva, but um Yovana said your man is the snake. <laughs> Charlie, that was funny. That was funny. And Nene, no, she ain't nothing but a bunch of shit. She just a bunch of shit. Wasn't no audio, wasn't no video, wasn't no nothing. She just played Yvonne to the hill. And it just was what it, what it was. Yvonne got uh, used by um, Nene. And, you know, still never found out about who's the snake. But Yvonne said, hell, Dennis is the snake. <laughs> Then, you know, we had the closet gate that kept coming back and forth in season 12. Nene beating up, uh, allegedly, uh, film producers, uh, cameramen and all that stuff. Making her come up short of some episodes for season 12. But, you know, it's always another story to that. Nene said it wasn't that. She negotiated her contract and the scene she was going to be in and the episodes. And that was that. Okay. It was that for that in Nene's mind, but it wasn't that for that in our mind. And child, Lord, I don't know what Kayla looked like, child, when she came in this episode. She looked like she can go back to middle school. I'm like, what is going on with her hairstyle, her wardrobe, and her demeanor? Where is the child real mama? Where is her biological mama? Kakan ain't doing nothing. I'm like, you throw all this weave in these babies' hair. And then they look, uh, they look too grown for their age. And then they come back, don't want to wear all them wigs and weeds. And they go back to looking like young children that ain't even out of high school. And the girl's 23 years old. And she look like she can go back to middle school. Black don't crack, I'm telling you. But she just, she just felt to me all out of sorts. Then you got Riley nowadays. She sporting an afro. I'm like, girl, see, that's what I'm saying. You get these young kids into this weave, this uh, extensions and wigs, and they tear out their beautiful hair. Then they got to start over from scratch. And then ask, where did it all go? And you got too far too fast in the grown folks' life and using accessories on top of your hair when you should have just been letting your pretty hair grow from the beginning. But anyway, just going back. You know, then we had the Three Musketeer gate with Candy, Kenya, and Cynthia calling themselves teaming up to take down Nene. That was a hot mess. Then for the season finale, you had Nene and the Kenya gate. Okay, them fussing about, you don't want none of me. You don't want this. You don't want that. I said, now, Barbo could have really set it up. Yeah, they could have set it up, put a, a big-ass ring out there where they had blocked out this neighborhood, which I don't know why they couldn't do it in their own neighborhood or have, like, a little block party or something. But I get them white folks that not up in here. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't finna do no eager stuff like that up in here. So they had to take it somewhere else where they can rent somebody's subdivision and have a thing sort of baby shower. Which I'm like, Nene, honey, why we just couldn't, why you couldn't just do an event hall, dress it up in pink or blue? Or since you already know you were having a girl, have pictures of Shadina, which is your surrogate. Or a person carrying your baby. Have pictures of you. Have pictures of, you know, the whole family. And then a little question mark of what baby girl Blaze or Banks. I'm glad y'all decided on Blaze. Because I don't know where this Banks was coming from. That was too masculine for it to be fitting for a little girl. that going to be having bows in her hand. Dresses and all this stuff. Thing. I didn't like Banks. Okay. I didn't like. 
like it. But I'm glad y'all chose correctly. I'm glad y'all chose what baby Ace wanted. He said, I want her name to be Blaze. I don't know where he got it from. But it sounded cute coming out of his mouth. So I said, ooh, let his sister be named Blaze. Let his sister be named Blaze, honey. And the Lord worked it out. Uh, the shuffle of the hands worked it out. And the child was named Blaze. But anyway, yes, 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 we finally come to an end. The end of the road. Still I can't let go. It's a lonesome road. Ooh. Ooh. Y'all know how it go. Anyway, but getting back to the uh, season finale, which was season 12, episode 22. It was called A Star is Born. And they were pretty much... Um, piggybacking off the name star meaning a baby was going to be born soon to the burris tucker uh, family their last baby unless she's going to be adopting or something but i don't think todd could take another child i really don't i think ace was enough he had his boy and he cool with that. <laughs> then blaze had to come in the picture which is the last sperm he had to give to candace egg and he like probably saying to himself thank you jesus i'm so tired of all these children they wearing me down Woo, child but he probably didn't say it but i'm sure he thought it but anyway i'm gonna get on into the parts that i liked it of this um episode of the real housewives of atlanta final episode child let's just get to the point where i wish they would have put a ring and, and, and gloved up kenya moore and nene leaks just glued them up in some pink gloves have the little ring and white and pink and just let them duke it out because i'm sick of both of them at this point they fuss from the beginning they still fussing at the end i'm like oh can we get a a, a reprieve or something because it's not even being funny no more it's quite it to me it's annoying now i'm just sick of the both of them okay nene lied kenya lied nene upset kenya kenya upset nene oh nene act like she want to pounce on somebody then kenya come out looking like she want to pounce on nene i like it's too much either slap each other in the face you know uh scratch each other up tie up some clothes do something okay to give me a little bit more to want to be bothered with y'all because right now i'm like can we get somebody to shoot them in the ass with a target uh uh, uh what do you call it what them uh what do you call them thing when they be shooting the animals that don't got uh bad and they're trying to put them down but they just tranquilize a gun that's what i'm getting put two bullets in them two tranquilizer darts in their behinds and let them fall asleep because i'm tired of them I, I really was tired i was like forget security call the animal control because they acting like animals out there i'm sick of them but basically they got the fuss and they can the little party can you started the shit well marlo really started it but you know you gotta have a instigator somewhere on on the map okay and that's really what Marlo do. She's the friend, but yet she's the instigator. And she do it so remarkably well to where you couldn't even think that she would have been the instigator. But she went on and said, you know, can't this you up in the news talking about Nene girl. And then can you going to get a, a backbone and say, yeah, it, it was, uh, excuse me. It was meant, it sure was meant for some shit starting. Yes, I started it. I said it. Yes, I don't like Nene. <laughs> and Nene don't like me. I'm like, okay, well, at least we know we're playing with a full deck. All right, we ain't got no missing pieces here. So, basically, they were going around, you know, saying, Kenny was running her mouth too much with TMZ. Or that's what Nene was, was feeling. And it was pretty much... Put, throwing a, a wrench, a monkey wrench in Candy, Burris, and Todd Tucker. Little shindig they had for Baby Blaze, okay? The introduction of their new baby coming into the world. And I don't know where they got this fake, fraudulent, foolery fuckery scene. I'm like, who who does that? Who would go rent a empty... Well, not, it wasn't an empty subdivision. They had houses around now. But you're going to sit up there plan something of that magnitude and the furniture gonna be sitting outside in the park and i like wait a minute um we're really in the street and they're gonna have some stars like um you know in california have the walker 
the Hall of Women, the Hall of Fame or the Walk of Fame, where you go on this uh, street and just has stars lined up after each other, um, mostly for motion pictures, and then it started getting to be like entertainers in the music industry and stuff of that nature. But it was really about film uh, back in the day when they started the Hall, uh, the Walk of Fame in Hollywood, and uh, they had that on now. Had black, I mean. I don't know if they had Blaze name. No, they couldn't have Blaze name down there because they hadn't put the name of who they thought between Banks and Blaze, which name she was gonna be chosen to have. But um, and you know, you you ain't even really gotta have when you got money or you feel like you got money. You ain't really gotta have no serious thought out name because really, A should have been Cash, but. Uh, Kim Zoziak took that name or stole that name from Candy. Candy took it very offensively, you know. And, uh, you know, celebrities, they tend to just name their children outrageous, landish names because they don't really feel that they're going to be befitting or working for nobody but themselves or the family business anyway. So they give them all kinds of strange names, you know. Like, you ain't going to be putting out no resume nowhere. You ain't going to be filling out no job application. You're going to run my business, the business I started for the family, or you're going to get out there and be an entrepreneur yourself, you know, because you got that in your blood. That's what you're going to do. So entertainers tend to name their children, not traditional names, but crazy ass names. Okay. So it did not surprise me one bit that Candy wanted to choose another extraordinary name for her child because that's what she could do. Okay, but anyway. Um, let's see. Where are we? Where are we? We everywhere but nowhere in this darn episode. Cause it was just too much of Kenya and Nene going back and forth. It was just uh I was sick of it. Oh, if I would Elvis, Elvis Presley I had his money, I probably would have shot the TV up. <laughs> Like, go get me another one the next day because it was just that boring. I'm like, good gracious, where is Todd at? What, what is he doing around now? But anyway, we switch a little fences. Uh, we go to where this pit we're gonna be everywhere, so I'm just gonna pick up, like I said, the pieces that I like. We go back to where Nene is uh, pretty much trying to get her little outfit together for the party. Greg, like. I ain't finna wear all that sparkly shit. I'm finna, I'm wearing brown. You do what you want to do. Yes, that look nice, a little silver outfit she came up. It was another jogging outfit. And uh, she called herself want to wear that. And I was like, oh, no, don't wear that mess. Don't wear that mess. But anyway, uh, she found something similar. It was more of a platinum color or tannish or brown. It was kind of matching Greg, if you will. Um, it was okay. But she basically was, um, she went over there and visit Portia, you know what I'm saying? Trying to, you know, make big sister, little sister friendships back again. And I don't know, I guess she was just too loud for PJ. PJ started hollering. <laughs> like, this is the Wicked Witch of the West, East, South, and North. What is she doing here, Mama? What is she doing here? So PJ said, uh-uh, this is my alarm to let you know we got a devil in the house. Right? She started crying. Child. I was freaking myself out. I was just laughing my ass off. I was like, Nene, for one, you don't come in there loud. And you don't know that child of child on you. Of course she going to scream, okay? Probably that they go hell you was like, uh-uh, uh-uh. Let me take it off so I can play with it. That's what she probably wanted to do. But anyway, she went over there. And uh, she pretty much was talking about... Uh, here was this conversation with wind. I'm kind of throwing, you know, because it was thundering last night. I wanted to get it out to y'all, but I'm like, I ain't finna get up here and talking. And then, the, uh, what do you call it? The electricity come through the house and destroy everything. I, I ain't finna do that. Believe it or not, it did that in my house one time, a long, long time ago. It's a thunder lightning storm came. It, then it hit our house and a few other houses on the block, tore my garage door. Uh, stereo system, TV downstairs. Oh, it was a hot mess. But anyway, it all got replaced by the grace of God and having insurance. But I'm confused. I don't know if it was she was talking to Wendy or was she because uh, Nene called Wendy back, Wendy Williams. Uh, Wendy had called her initially, but I guess Nene was too busy to answer the phone call. So as she was calling herself, getting together, uh, getting herself together for that night's nice event. Which is Candace event, uh, coming out of her daughter and stuff. 
Ah, and the introduction of her surrogate that she wanted to introduce to her friends, family, and, you know, constituents, Shadina. Um, Nene was talking to Wendy Williams, and Wendy Williams kind of really short with her, you know, about the comments and goings on what she should be doing and whatnot. Oh, it's my cousin in the country. Might have declined that call and call her back after I finished taping. But anyway, um... Yeah, child. Um, Nene was saying, I don't know why Kenya talking about me. Because Wendy was pretty much wanting to tell her that Kenya was doing an interview or had done an interview on TMZ. And she's up here in Atlanta doing something with, um, you know, her hair care products. And, you know, she got to talk with one of the journalists. And they were just asking questions about her feud between Kenya and you, Nene. And, you know, what was going to be seeing this season and you know are they ever going to be friends and this and third and Kenya was really talking nasty and negative the entire time the man was interviewing her about Nene and she was pretty much expressing Kenya was Nene ain't got no friends da da dee da 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 uh nobody likes Nene on the show you know speaking for people without people being there you know what I'm saying like can you doing too much again let people come out and say who they don't like or what they don't like about Nene you ain't got to tell everybody because as you can see we went through the whole season they might have started off on your team but they showed jump ship real quick faster than her right now all I'm liking Nene everybody done made up with Nene except for you and I would say Eva because you know y'all been going back and forth and Nene don't say some slick shit about Eva don't really need to be on the show because that's the only thing she want to do is have babies and you know quite frankly <laughs> I was thinking about Eva too and I didn't even put her I think I put one picture of her in the video because I, I was thinking about her being on the sh uh, season as well and I'm like we really didn't have to have Eva here because we didn't really see anything that she was giving us. I mean, it was one scene with the cookie lady. She would eat up all the cookie ladies' uh, cookies and stuff. But other than that, it's just like she could have been a friend of the uh, a friend of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. She didn't need, necessarily have to have a peach. She not giving us nothing. So I, I don't know why she has her peach, guys. Maybe y'all can tell me because, I mean, she could be a part of the show but just not a peach carrier. Bring Phaedra back. Phaedra needs that peach. Okay. Phaedra. Or, um, let me see. Yeah, bring Shamari DeVoe back. <laughs> Maybe she can tell us what's going on with New Edition. Okay. Or something to that effect, honey. But I'm like, uh-uh. No. I, to me, Tanya's a little bit more interesting and look like she could be a little bit more messier. So, you know, if they want to get Tanya to be a little bit more messier, that's fine with me because she did good with that wig gate. <laughs> Yeah. It was just like a little touch, a little knock on her shoulder, like I'm here, honey. I'm here. I'm ready to get tapped by you so we can go on and do battle. But yeah, Tanya ain't gonna ever I don't think Tanya's gonna come out really strong on Kenya Moore. Cause even Kim Fields could have sold her up with the whole mess about her husband being gay and just what Hollywood is saying about her husband behind her back and you know, trying to pull a chair out from under Kim feels to kind of excuse her. That's the shit Kenya be doing. I'm like, Kenya should have been got slapped on the side of her face or her, her forehead, honey. I'm serious. But see, Kenya be the one. She be provoking you to hit her and then she be ready to sue you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But she be asking for that ass whooping all day long. And see, that's why I don't like people like her. She like to instigate and she likes to uh, really be a thorn in your side but then she ain't gonna come with nothing you know what i'm saying she ain't gonna be ready to put up them dudes and defend her actions and that's why i, mm -mm, I can't mm -mm, can't do it with can you but anyway nene was telling wendy she don't need to be talking about me she need to be talking about that fake booty she got and i looked at that booty can you had it did not look right it didn't make it didn't make can you look like she could walk right with it you know what i'm saying it wasn't like the booty poor she got and i think poor she got a fake ass too but uh it was a little bit more believable than what Kenya looked like. She was it's like Kenya was walking. Like, I don't know. It was like something was on the back of her, but it wasn't moving with her. If y'all get where, where I'm going with it. But, no, I didn't like Kenya booty. But, uh, in that white dress she had. Because it was just, uh-uh. It, 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 was, it was doing something awkward. 
And then she was talking about Kenya had bought her eggs because Kenya ain't had no eggs. She ain't had no eggs stored up. All her eggs had gone bad or something. And Mark just implanted his sperm in whatever eggs she could find. I think one of my subscribers uh, of my family on YouTube had said that Kenya used her cousin's eggs or something like that. So I'm like, okay, I can believe that too. And then um, Nene was telling um, Wendy that, you know, you could find J-Lo's um, uh, marriage license and somebody else, uh, oh, Jay-Z and Beyonce's marriage license, but you couldn't find Kenya Moore's. <laughs> so you can't divorce something you never got married to in the first place. I said, go ahead, Nene. I like that read, and I like that read. I'm saying that myself. So, we all on the same boat. We felt Kenya made this a very big storyline. And she has no proof because if Bravo asked her to produce the receipt, she she wouldn't be able to do it. And she'll look so bad in y'all eyes because y'all had put too much hopes in Kenya more. Okay, but it is here what it is. Um, then we got, um, you know, Nene goes around and tells um, Wendy. And, you know, and probably really she said to the rest of the crew as well in past conversations, you know, Faith, I mean, uh, Kenya is a real big bully because she bullied um, Kim Fields. You know, we know we I've given y'all visuals of Kim Fields and her being on The Real Housewives of Atlanta and how Kenya tried to bully her and talk crazy to her. You know, she tried to bully Portia with the bullhorn when they was doing a reunion season. She had the scepter and the bullhorn going on uh, uh, across Cynthia in way of trying to get to Portia and get her go, which we saw the ending of that. Kenya had her ass being dragged by Portia, okay, and her weave she had connected to her real hair. So, and then we had the situation where... Can I mean, yeah, Kenya was being messy with flirting with Apollo and, and all this kind of stuff. When she knew that was a married man, she had no business touch your feeling on him or any of that thing. Because she wouldn't want Mark to be doing that with any of the women on the Real Housewives of Atlanta or the women of the Housewives of Atlanta being too friendly and touch your feeling on Mark. Or she would have been saying something. So I, I totally agree. And, you know, Portia Dance tell Nene that. Kenya was uh had lied about the whole situation when they had that March of Dimes little uh induction they did with her and she invited the women uh to the event and Kenya, you know, trying to take a story from somebody else and try to tell Nene that yeah, Kenya made up that lie. She wasn't there when uh Shamia had broke her her water had broke. Shamia had called her a day after that event. And I'm like, well, my thing in Porsche with Shamil, if Shamil really was your friend, honey, we would have had a sidebar that it would have been caught on tape. Like, I was like, can I talk to you for a minute, um, Kenya, as well as uh, Portia? And I would pull them jokers to the side, like Candy had pulled Kenya to the side when they were at that, um, what do you call it, meet and greet or introducing Cynthia Bailey's wine cellar before she got proposed to. Uh, she tried to tell Kenya, yeah, this one right here, why did you do what you did? And she, I mean, she told her up from the floor up, Kenya did, trying to get Kenya straight. And Kenya was looking all crazy and stuff. And that's the same thing I would have did if I was, um, what is Shamia? I would say, come, come, come here for a minute. Come, come here right now. And we would excuse ourselves. We wouldn't went over there. And I was like, now, Kenya, why you tell that lie? You know, I ain't call you. You know, I, I why would I want to call you? Okay. Why I would I had so many people I could have called, and you know I could have called Portia if I wanted to, but you made this big old deal like we were buddy buddies, and Portia had did something wrong to me, and you had to pick up the slack from what Portia had laid down on the floor for you to do it. I was like, uh, I would have called a spade a spade, and we would end that conversation. I would have went back to my food and had a lovely time after that, but it would have been said that no, I didn't dog out uh you Portia, I didn't put Kenya you know before you. And, you know, I'll try to give you something to think about that was going to be negative And you're going to have to come and ask me, you know, about it. So, I, I had to get that straight. And, see, that's why I would have played it if I was Shamil. But Shamil was basically telling um, Portia the day after the event that she didn't want to cause a display. She didn't want to call a negative display, take the shine away from her by trying to tell her in front of uh, Portia and the rest of the women that, no, can you lie? Uh, none of that happened the way Kenya said it did. And, you know, 
I could see both sides, but I would have did the uh the first one that I was saying. I would have pulled us three together, Portia, me, myself, and Kenya. And we would have talked about that situation and got that stuff straightened out. But it just is what it is. Okay. Um then Nene's over there still talking to Portia about do you think Candy really get uh the girl together, her and Cynthia, meaning Kenya, do they get Kenya together? And she was like, you know, I think they do, but you know, that's their friend and they have to do what they gotta do and you know, they're very very delicate with her, but then again, you know, I really believe so. And I was with um Portia. I do you know, Candid improved and show us how she can get in Kenya ass when she wants to. She was defending Cynthia at the uh the little part when uh Mike was gonna propose to her. She told Kenya off by herself then. She told Kenya off when Kenya's trying to make Cynthia again look stupid. Uh, about not knowing her wine when it came to her meats and which one to serve with which and, and stuff. And, you know, Candy had gotten her ass about that. Like, how many wine cellars do you own? <laughs> I'm like, go ahead, Candy. Touche. That's two points for you. Can you know for you, boo? So I can't say, you know, when it comes to Cynthia, um, Candy is a more truer friend and a defending friend than Kenya is. So, uh, ever could be cooking out for herself. That's it, honey. I think she'll turn on her daughter uh, if her daughter got in her way of some type of success. Because that's what Kenya just pins me as. And um, I don't think it's going to change because Kenya needs to have therapy. She needs to search in her soul and figure out what's going on down now in, them, in that brain of hers, pretty much. Um... And that's pretty much it that I had, guys. Other than, like I said, I don't know what. Riley was not dressed appropriate for the little baby event. Kayla wasn't really dressed appropriate. I'm like, what kind of event was this? Was this a star-studded thing where the guests had to come up looking shiny and stuff of that nature? And the family uh, that was also welcoming Baby Blaze, they got to look like, I don't know, they going to a picnic or something or they going to the movies. Cause they sure wasn't dressed at all, but it, it just is what it is. Candy was more out dressed than the rest of her family. And I thought that was weird as hell, but okay. Maybe y'all can get down in the comments and tell me uh, what was really going on. Um, then I was like, mm, let's go to the piece de resistance when they had show. Cause they really didn't give us a really in depth view of what happened at the restaurant between Todd, Candy, and Candy's mom. All the thing they showed us was just a little brief clip of Candy sitting there with her mom at the OLG restaurant looking like they waiting to order some food and you know how that was going to play out or whatnot. Then they showed Todd in the corner in the back somewhere you know paying attention to everybody but you know, his wife and his uh mother-in-law, okay? Which it didn't cost nothing for Todd to get out there and say, hey, babe, what y'all doing? Give hugs all the way around, including his mother-in-law. And say, what y'all want? Have y'all got y'all food? Y'all cool? Y'all good? Because I'm busy, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I just want to come out here and say, hey, for the cameras, okay, of course, because you see they rolling. I know they rolling. But I ought to get back what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? And he could say, Mom, just I'm going to call you later so make sure you pick up that phone. Okay, girl. And then, you know, kiss on the forehead or whatever and get the hell on. You know what I'm saying? You ought to do all that. But that's all you could have did. But Todd acting all kind of funky and stuff and his feelings and not really liking his mother-in-law. I'm like, damn, Todd, what is your family? Where are your cousins? Where are your friends at? boy do you have anybody on your mother's side or even your daddy's side that you could bring into the picture and we be let seeing you kick it with them or something because you're just deep in candace family they all surround you and you're like you don't look like you got nobody baby but anyway uh he pretty much didn't come out didn't do shit and candy brought it back to him like why you do my mama this way why you ain't coming and say hey to her get a hug or something because you knew this event was coming up you know this at the same night and then you, you know showing your ass of course she wouldn't want to come of course she didn't want to come like candy your mama still could have came she could have cussed her ass out you know, whatever, however she want to get down with it. And she still could have came. But, again, you let Todd get on your nerves. You let your mama get on your nerves. And, girl, somebody got to be happy. This might well be you. You know what I'm saying? Girl, you be 
doing too much. And I'm like, uh-uh. Don't let nobody disrespect your mama, but then don't let your mama disrespect you either. And I'm like, your toy do it to you, disrespect you. Your mama do it to you. And the only thing you do is sit around here and cry about it. I'm like, girl, then you finna get into it with Todd. At your little baby shower when he like want to come first. I mean, you want to fuss with me or you want, what you want to do? You, we can do either or. I'm here for it. Which one you want to do? You want to fuss? You want to have a good time? You want to have a good time? You want to fuss? You know, what you want to do? Tell me, girl. And that's when, it, before he get that last word, I would have slapped him upside his forehead or his face. Okay? And then I'm like, this shit finna be on. I would tell him, guess, okay, party over. Because I got to get my husband straight. Because he don't disrespect me and my mom. And I said, it's finna go down. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would have saw y'all. I would have slapped him right upside his forehead or on his his cheek or somewhere. Huh? Punched him in the stomach, whatever. He had it coming. He had it coming. Because he was just doing too much. He was doing too much earlier that day. And then he going to show out. I would have gave the camera something, honey. I would have gave the camera something. Hey, who are they going to put me in jail? You really talking to put me in jail for slapping the shit out of him after him being disrespectful to me and my mama? Please. Because when I sure got out of that jail, because somebody would have bailed me out. Okay, I would have post bail. He, he would have been gone. I don't care that much. He would have been gone. Gone like the sun. Gone like the sun setting, honey. Woo, don't let the sun shine down on me. Or does it go down on me? Y'all remember that George Michael song? I know y'all remember. But anyway. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have for this uh particular uh last finale of the season. I don't, to tell you, the truth, I really don't know why they invited Shadina. Uh, I know she was the surrogate and all of that because they really treat her right. Well, it's like she didn't have all the fanfare on her. It's like she was just there with her biological daughter. They were sitting there. They wasn't greeting them. Like you had people walking all the way around and you had this little section where candy birds family was uh, at and they was like not even fraternizing or, or coming to see shadina and talk with her and everything because they were mad i guess somebody else wanted to carry the baby but candy didn't want you know her family member to carry the baby i don't know what was going on <laughs> but i'm like it looked that awkward okay can you say awkward then you got nene and kenny i mean kenny over there fussing on the side it was a hot mess it was like a zoo a, like you walking through a little carnival zoo and you had live you know, human beings acting like animals out there. Like, they need to be shot with darts. You know what I'm sleeping darts and stuff. Especially Kenya and, um, what's her name? Kenya and, and Nene. Hell, you could have got Mama Joyce, too, if she would have came. I'm like, girl, Mama Joyce be doing too much. She just be, because she knows she should have been at her baby's thing. Her baby done gave her too much houses, cars, clothes, money. And, you know, <coughs> she going to let the part of her here there. Hell no. But it just is what it is. That's all I have for the video, guys. Y'all get down in the comments. Y'all tell me what y'all thought about uh, last night's episode. Like I told you, it was just a hot mess. I'm so glad season 12 was over with. We need some new cast. We really do. Because if I had to go through another season with Nene and Kenya still, time like, put their asses in a ring and let them duke it out. Okay? Give me something else to taste with this dry steak y'all giving me of these two women that's supposed to be carrying the show it's too much it's dried up it's done put a fork in it we need another storyline for those two i don't know what it would be or how it would be but just going back and forth about you know nene caught my child a buffalo i mean it's dead kenya i don't know i don't know what she be calling nene i you know it's ugly mean bully that's dead too you know it's so dead it's just like okay where's the piece of resistance where is the heightening moment where you make me like oh did she say that oh did she go there you know but anyway that's all i had i will see y'all next video and don't forget to like comment and subscribe and again this was season 12 and my way of viewing it of the real housewives of Atlanta finale season 20 I um, mean episode 22 season 12 a star is born all right guys see you next video bye bye